Justin LT Chua, which she likes to be called Justin. I know it's called Justin, but it is Justin. She is the brains behind one of the biggest websites that help people with getting jobs, but specifically for college kids. You know? Yeah. So, gusto ko naman like, what made you want to start that website? So I started it because very funny story a lot like back in December 2015 a lot of people that I wasn't very close to were just messaging me and asking me the same questions again and again how did you get this internship how did you do that how do you do the resume and I I was just at some point it was like 20 people already and this is December 2015 so around <laughs> Christmas time and yeah, yeah. that and then I was like copy pasting my answers back and forth to them and then I was thinking why do these people who I'm not that close to like they can ask me these questions but the people I'm really close to why don't they ask me so I ended up asking my friends and they were like oh we know you we love you we know that like you might get irritated at us if we ask you too many questions because that's who I am as a person I'm not that like easy to talk to oh really so, okay. so it ended up me going like oh my gosh if the people I love like they feel like they can't ask me these things and being such a bad friend and I felt like you know I it's helping others but maybe I don't want to help them either so I decided like just to take all of my answers and then start writing it up and then putting it out into a free WordPress site I just literally threw it out there like the first post was the 15 most frequently asked questions about interning which was literally everything they were asking me from those like 20 people and then I posted it at like 11 30 at night I really, really didn't expect anything to happen to it and then the next day it like had 500 hits the day after that it had like a thousand five hundred and it just kept going like that and I had left wow. like this small Google form at the end like if you have any questions and you want to let me know anonymously just feel free to throw it in here and then a lot of people did throw it in there so it sort of like took off from there now oh there really is this gap like between what there is online and what is like happening in real life because if you look at what's online a lot of what's on Google is just like 500 word articles so they're so brown so brown basic they'll just tell you like super generic advice and honestly they come from the Western world which is really different from it's Eastern different from here, context yeah. so they'll tell you things like you need to do a really firm handshake and look them in the eye when you first meet them but when you're when you're Asian especially if you're a girl a lot of people will take that as like a sign of aggression and they won't like that from you mm. so I try to contextualize it like this is what I'm seeing this is what I've learned from doing all of this job hunting and interning as well and so para, the blog really started from there that I just wanted to codify all of these like learnings I had and give them out to other people regardless of who they are but so they find the site you know if it helps you great if you can't find it and it doesn't help you sorry na lang. Parang, I did my part and sorry guys we didn't mention it earlier but it's called the border collective yes. um so please go to that website and it will be changed to the bumpy career soon but you can the go to bumpy that career. Yes. Okay, so that is new name so it's see, more aligned with what it really is now oh hey so, yeah. well, by the time this comes out maybe it'll be it'll the bumpy, be the bumpy career, career. <laughs> it'll have like a site redirect now on, like, even if you type border collective awesome so the reason you're able to give all this advice and the reason like 20 people at a time were asking you these questions is because you've been getting really good like internship roles and then I got a lot of job offers how did you do that so the backstory of that is I was failing mathematical economics because I thought I was smarter than I really am oh. and I realized like oh my gosh if we're gonna laban at the end of college uh. through grades alone I'm gonna fail against everyone else so I decided mm. to start taking internship and it was very sakta it was a five month summer and I, and I wasn't gonna take a class so I decided I'm gonna go intern so I ended up being first software to intern for Citibank Philippines and then after that I ended up getting into Philip Morris's program in Compass which was launching at the time mm. I think it was a really it was a combination of one, really good luck that a lot of opportunities were opening up the exact same time I was applying. And two, at that point, I had been reading a lot about how do you apply to these jobs? How do you be better than other people? Because I really knew I had to sort of stand out from the rest of my batchmates or else I would end up having like a stupid job or a job I really hate. And parang, just having that foresight to think about it a little bit just caused me to do all of these things. So yeah. I ended up like interning for a startup for a while called Blogapalooza, which was influencer marketing when it was still like nothing here. Oh, and then it's wow. now it knows a lot more, so it helped me in the blog. Then I ended up interning as well for Boston Consulting Group for a while when they were first opening up their offices here. And it was just like a lot of good opportunities were open and I was like aggressive enough to say I think I'm good enough to try out for this so and it worked and then like the techniques that I did like to tell myself from the mindset to how I write it that's what I put in the blog as well like if I can do this as the terrible person I am from school <laughs> and like from as a person talaga yeah. then you can do it too I believe in you 
and it's helping people. It helps it's helping people. people. Did you fail in your first? I'm curious about your first internship. Like, do you remember the interview? I say it's like your first time walking into mm -hmm. it, right? So. I was really lucky. The first time I interviewed was at Citibank, and then I ended up getting that internship. But I didn't want to go there. I wanted to go to Zalora because I wanted to do the funny, th fun things, uh, like the fun fashion sorry, things. Sorry, Citibank. Sorry, Citibank. <laughs> but like my parents were like, Citibank is better for you, and they pay more. So I was like, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. But I think I had gone into that interview reading so much already. I had read like probably a hundred articles at that point. Can I like, ask, like, what what did you read? How do you get into Google? How do you get into McKinsey? Ah, and then okay. I use that same like principles here. So okay. it's just like it is just a lot of me doing research and thinking, can I do this? Can I do that? And then taking it there. So structuring, how do I talk about stories? How do mm. I present myself? Like the branding side of it as a job applicant. Like I was just trial and airing it there. And I think it was a combination that they weren't expecting a 19 year old to come with that much like bravado. Because right. everyone else in the room was a senior already or a junior and they were yeah. probably like 21. So the, and I really looked like a little kid, even more than I do right now. Like I really looked like a little kid going into that room. Yep. And they found like, they found that refreshing. So there. It's was it just, easy for you? It, no, like to this day, I still find interviews like really hard Scary. and public speaking really oh. hard. But I just push myself to do it every single time. I just think like if I failed, nobody knows I failed because I didn't tell them in the first place. And I think that's just always been my motto. If I fail, it's only me who will know I failed because I'm not gonna tell anyone else like, hey, like maybe someday I'll write about it on a blog. I'll make a full list of every place that rejected me so that you can yes. see that, you know, maybe these six places said yes, but like a hundred places said no to me or stopped replying to me then. How do you handle rejection? I think first I like cry and I get really angry. Of <laughs> Sorry, course. no need to laugh yeah. at that. <laughs> no, like, but it's, you it's cry honest. a little bit. And you're like like oh. I'll, I'll cry and I'll say like why. It's you know, tough, I'll go right? through like the de I'll just go through like the five stages of grief and all yeah. that like, depression and bargaining. Maybe they maybe they just lost my application in the mail. But then I think that mm -hmm. you know, at least now I know that I tried and they rejected me. Let's go try somewhere else. Let's do something else. Maybe it's a sign that I should just do a complete one eighty or a mm -hmm. ninety degree turn from there. So like. I initially was like applying to marketing positions and then I was like doing some stuff for them but I realized it's not something I really want to do in the future yeah. like for big brands so I decided to like pivot from there and do something else which is project management and then when I want to do marketing I want to do it for like small stuff like small businesses my own blog things like that because like they want to do the big scale Facebook ad stuff but when I tried to learn those things when I tried to parang make my way through that world I realized it's too hard and it feels like not me right. so you know just finding like this isn't something I want to do I need to go and pivot and like turn slowly to wherever it is that feels better for me and what I want to learn that's one of the most difficult things no when you're in college sometimes you're in a course where parang malabu yung pupunta mo sa buhay. Yeah. So you obviously experimented with different yeah. internships. Yeah. How do you figure it out? Like, or are you still are you figured out? Or are you still figuring it out? <laughs> I always I always say this as well to like my students and anyone who asks me for career advice. It's mm. easier to find out what you don't want to do than what you want to do. Okay. So when you can find out what you don't want to do, it closes up those doors and lets you focus on other doors. So parang for me, I realized finance is not something I'm going to go into. Mm. Supply chain, engineering, operations, stuff like that. Anything that is very detail oriented, it's not something for me. So just like being able to say no to like these jobs and then see the commonalities on why I'm saying no to these jobs. Now, it requires you to be super detail oriented. It requires you to have a strong grasp of numbers and like abstract concepts. Parang it helps you realize what you want to do more in the future. Like I really want to go into content that people see and mm. content that people like understand based on like what I do in my current job and what I do with the blog. So parang it helps me figure out more. You know what can I do next after this that will help me figure out more of what I want to do maybe three five years in the future. Like so thinking, this is what I want to be doing for the next 10 years of my life, which I think is a very naive way to look at life mm. nowadays. 
Nowadays, we jump we change. No, we, we change, change so fast. I always yeah. think that like the you of two years ago is a completely different you. Even six months, like growth is for for me. Growth is when you can look back at what you used to do or used to say six months ago, and you kind of cringe at like, oh, I used to do that. Now I've like changed. I know a little more. Like if you can't do that, baka you're not growing as fast or as far as you'd like to go. Whether it's growing down or growing oh, yeah. up, <laughs> growing negatively, and just yeah, like, hopefully yeah. not negatively. <laughs> What's your take on um, pursuing your passion versus doing something because it's your responsibility? Well, I'm I'm very Asian. I'm very Chinese. I always think like you have to make sure like your parents and your family is okay first before you go off and do what you want to do. So something I also advocate to a lot of my students is to have a parent talk. Like you just sit down to them and then you have it very objectively. What are your expectations of me? What do you expect Mm. my starting salary to be? What do you expect me to pay for once we get out? Once I get out of college? Like have this conversation with them. So some of my students they'll come back to me and say, my parents expect me to get a sixty thousand peso salary. And so I have like a slide. I make them show everyone that's that's impossible so you so Ateneo fresh graduates it's, it's like fresh grad making 60 yeah so Ateneo fresh graduates nga, make 20,000 for <laughs> yeah. as an average oh yeah, yeah so I tell them like this is presented in this data this comes from job street from Philippine star from places that your parents will think are credible and then you tell them maybe five people in a batch will get higher than 40,000 so I want you my parents to think very clearly do you think I am one of those five people who can do that and like your parents have to also be very honest with you like no, no, my child. <laughs> sorry, honey. I'm so sorry. Like, I think you're you're in the you're in the top part of the middle. We love you, but yeah, like you know, just yeah, be very realistic. honest with them. Yeah. And like some people, they find out like during these parent talks, like, oh, my parents expect me, my my dad's gonna retire. I have to put my four siblings through college next, and they they're like horrified because they didn't know that they hadn't had these conversations before. Yeah. So I think having them like earlier helps you gear up, like and set these like timelines to them like I'm going to do whatever I want for the next three years and then in the fourth year I'll start like coming back to family business and doing all that just having these like timelines in place with them because family is very important to me Mm -hmm. and so I try to see like is it important to you too if it's not feel free to go off like your family if ever but you know have these conversations with them then that's a very good answer thank you what if your parents are wrong though then that's up to you, na. It's hard, though. Oh, it's hard. It depends on every <laughs> as situation. As much as you love them and you respect your family. Yeah, but like, if your parents are wrong and you know they're wrong in your heart, then you have to make those decisions. Like, what do I need from them? Ba? Do I need their support? Do I need their financial support to go pursue these School, things? Or yeah. can I do it all on my own, na? Like, mm. have those hard conversations with yourself. Like, for me, my parents have been... My parents will give me advice that I know is in their mind is the best, but I know in mine, like, they come from a different time already. So it's not always right. And they were entrepreneurs, they went into banking. It's very different from what I want to do. So I just tend to not ask them for advice unless I really want their input and support on it. And I usually just give them updates on what I'm actually doing, Kaisa. Like, asking them, should I do this thing or not? Open communication, but you're making your own mistakes. Yeah, (laughs) like set those parameters with your family. Don't really feel the need to tell them like everything that's going on in your life. Like if you're thinking mm. of buying an expensive cell phone, they might have like so much input. Like just give that money to the family. <laughs> da, 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 da. Yeah. Like you're gonna get irritated. So just like yeah. buy the phone and be like, hey, I bought the phone. <laughs> that's what's how up? it is. That's how you be what's independent. It? And I think at the same time, your parents will respect you for your decisions. Yeah. Oh, like in an yeah. Like you're really determined. If you stand by your yes. boundaries, like you know, this is as far as I'm willing to go. If you don't wanna meet me halfway, then. There's gonna be this gap between us. That's all your fault, now. Nah. Yeah, and you'll they'll know they raised you well. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully. Um, I wanted to ask you because I was running through your blog, mm-hmm. and there are a lot of really, really good questions that you share. Mm-hmm. Um, to memory, do you mm-hmm. remember? And like, what are your favorites that you think give the best advice for people looking for work coming from the college standpoint? I think the best one is first, like, how do you get a resume that gets your foot in any door? And the answer there was like, you just have to contextualize everything. So a mistake I see a lot of people make is they assume that the HR knows what they're talking about. They'll they'll use acronyms, they'll say like, this is the biggest event in Ateneo. So we don't know what that means. I always have to tell them, you have to tell them, there's like, this means that there's 3,000 attendees. We've been planning for nine months. It's a hundred person team. Because you can't 
Honestly, like, biggest event in Ateneo, I was project head, yay, we won. Parang, you have to be more specific. It was 3,000 attendees, nine months of planning, 100 people in the core team. We made sponsorship over 100,000K. Like, list it all down talaga for the HR. Don't expect them to connect the dots. You do it for them as succinctly as possible in your resume. And if you can do that, it sets you apart from everyone else. Because everyone else is either going to write their job description lang with no results, or they're going to write giant paragraphs that nobody's interested in reading. Hmm. So it's like always those two ends of the spectrum. Lang. Resumes. You know, my personal opinion, I've always had really ugly resumes, but Same. I still get the job. I'll say exactly. That. <laughs> yeah. I don't design. Like, you just need black, white, and it says the right things, and yeah, it's okay. Your it name, can be ugly. phone number, yeah. what you've done, right? Yeah. As simple as possible. But I would say, uh, and a lot of people argue that it's it's your connections or your mm. personality that helps, but there are also very capable people mm. who don't have that, like, bravado yeah. right it's like oh hire me yeah how, how do they how would you assist someone who's very capable but doesn't have that personality i would always advocate that they take on either projects like even volunteer projects that showcase the kind of skills they want to have in their future role and then just take the results from there get people to testify about you mm. so maybe you don't have so maybe like you don't that. have like the great profs who are going to say this is my student they're really amazing hire them right away in your place but sometimes you can take on a project for someone else who will showcase it or even if it's a small thing so sometimes i'll just tell people like pick an ngo that you like and ask them to do a very small project for them that you can showcase and you get to add that to your resume like let's say there's this ngo that um they ship vegetables to your door straight from farmer to their your door mm -hmm. and then you're the one who optimizes like their delivery framework or you're the one who handles you made all their customer service faq one very basic thing that maybe wouldn't take you a whole day even but then it's like a project you can talk about always right because it, it shows two things yeah. yeah it shows two things one you're you're willing to help others and step up outside your comfort zone and two you can deliver results quickly mm -hmm. that people can you know optimize quickly too that's a really good point i i have to ask you this now like were you always how did you develop yourself to be this way you are actually a wealth of knowledge thanks i read a lot <laughs> you read a lot like one thing is i read a lot and then two <laughs> like i always tell people you just make trade-offs with your time uh -huh. so like i didn't I, I stopped watching tv i think like when i started freshman year college and then instead i would because i was like always commuting and there's a whole year we didn't have a maid so i was the one doing all the things in our house so okay. it was always just like reading books or listening to podcasts at that time and then really reading ideas that i found interesting like so. give us give us some of your gold nuggets like what are you reading what are you listening to in podcasts just name a few well, one thing I well most, nowadays I re, I listen to a lot of things about optimizing the blog and turning it into a parang something that's going to be more of like an info like becoming an infopreneur. So really ah, okay. giving you this information out there and making sure that it's uh, nice. reaching out to different mediums. Yeah, but yeah. a lot of things that I always advocate like my students to read is this book from early 2010s called Defining Decade. It's written by Meg J. She's a PhD and it was all about how if you f*** up your 20s, the rest of your life is f***ed up too. Oh wow. Yeah, so. It's good to know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's really great. Like it, Thanks. it goes into like money, career, love, and like, yeah, yeah. you know, you take it with a grain of salt because like her students were kids who could afford to come to therapy to her, but it was a really good read. Like it always yeah, tells yeah. you that you can't keep thinking like I'll do this in the future. I'll do this in the future. You really have to have a plan. Like it's let's say you, you want to go, you want to be a lawyer by 29. How long do you have to be in law school? Like four Plus. years. How long? <laughs> like ten well, months. Four years. Yeah, with the like, work here experience. in the Philippines, it's four years to be. Oh, okay. To go to law school first then you have to do like make i don't know i'm making this up now like two years of clerkship it's and then one time. year of studying the bar so it's already seven years and so if you wanted to do that 29 that means you had to graduate college at like 22 and do all that yep. so like just having those like basic math conversations with yourself like if you want to be married to at 27 what does that mean for you that you have to be meeting people like meeting three guys every you gotta week meet, for, yeah three guys a week yeah three guys a week just talk to them like are you, am i gonna marry you 
things like that. Are you going to marry you? Are you? you? Are you? you? That's no. good strategy. Maybe yeah. that'll be the next thing on your your next blog. Is I just tell people, be... how do you find dating? Yeah. Like, to get into a relationship. It's like, I help you get to good career. Now let me get, let me you, help get a good you. love yeah, life. This is the next stage. You've already <laughs> fixed your career. Welcome to the next part of TVC. It's all about helping you find your ideal spouse. Yes. And then you Papa Jack. Yeah, I don't you, know if you know Papa Jack. Papa Jack, yeah, yeah. Papa yeah. Jack gives love advice, of course. It's yeah, then you now. Papa Jack's gonna be. You, you need your own radio segment. Like, <laughs> and, and I'll just be telling them you're you're not optimizing your strategy. There's not enough guys coming into the funnel. Yes, me, yes. me, me. Use Bumble. Use Tinder. Swipe yeah. right on everything. No, I don't advocate that actually, because <laughs> I like the people there. The pool is already contaminated. You need oh, to yeah. find better pool. You are thinking about this. Yeah. Wow. Are you doing this in your life right now? Expect I have a boyfriend. It's like oh, okay. we've been here for like two years. There you but go. then all his friends go to him and always say, you know, when I I want to have a girlfriend, I feel like all my problems in life will be solved if I have a girlfriend. And I'm just like telling him, um, Don't. yeah, absolutely, like, absolutely, all your problems. Tell them everything. that it's new problems. Yeah. That's now there's gonna be more problems when you're in a relationship. Different, yeah. beautiful problems. <laughs> Random advice: If you're looking for love advice, go to your friend's birthday parties, especially if it's like a big group. Their oh friend of God. a friend is what you'll date. A lot of my friends ended up dating a friend of a friend that they met at a birthday party of a mutual friend because it shows like it shows quality that's the same pool as you but, oh man this is a totally different conversation yeah, but is. man like, I don't want to this wanna... is not going to be part of the podcast <laughs> I'm just telling you now like that's how you do it just meet your friends and a friend I love that so Jessica last question for you um, sorry the name of the, the the blog is going to be the bumpy career now the bumpy career yeah now so, or just the bumpy career it's going to, no, the bumpy career. The bumpy career. Com. So the bumpy career, um, from my last question, what would you like it to become? Where would you like to take it? And yeah. So it's, it has two parts to it. So one, how does it help the individual? And two, how does it help like the industry in the future? So for me, for the individual, I want it to be the place where they can go to get, just get of head start on thinking about it. I don't want it to become like the Bible, like this is everything you really have to do. I just want it to give them like, this is a template, this is where you can start, but I want you to have a think about it and you to decide like what advice here works for you and what doesn't work for you and then you take it and then you make your own experiments and you make your own trial and you use it to find your own career. Like you, there'll be bumps along the way and I'll be there to like give advice sometimes, but along, but it's, personalized for you like it's really gonna be there so that's why we're trying to make like a table of contents that says if you're a high school student read these first if you're a college student read these first mm -hmm. if you're if you want to switch careers read these first because as I grow and I learn all these things I also want it to grow too Definitely. but you know it's main it's main selling point is still college students entering workplace because I'm still there yeah 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 then it's awesome and then for the bigger thing we're trying to do, I realized I had this really good opportunity that I was already getting like this influx of traffic from people who were very young and who were already thinking about careers. Because you wouldn't click on this if you weren't even thinking about it a little bit. So they were driven to some way. Yeah. So what we're doing now is something called, it's a stupid name. If you have a better idea, please let me know. But it's called the Gen Z Career Thoughts. So Gen Z is everyone under 23 years old right now. And it's just mm -hmm. like a survey about what do they want to do in life like what are their thoughts about HR practices like not being not getting an email back after an interview or just being ghosted in general mm. what do they see as a long time for them to stay in a company what's a long time for someone else to stay at a company things like that and the insights from this survey we're gonna use it to start telling companies that if you want to adapt to the incoming generation here's like a book that you can take like here's some data this is what you can do right now like Gen Z wants to be kept like updated once a week at least like where are they already in the application if you're rejecting them reject them they don't care mm. but like things like that very just basic things to change how we do HR practices here to prepare for them Gen Z is the next generation so we have to prepare for them that's yeah, a brilliant like we're not idea even doing well with Millennials oh. in my opinion <laughs> and like I was like maybe if we just optimize for the next generation like completely skip yep. we'll be ahead of the pack at some point I totally believe so because Gen Z is a better generation than the millennials <laughs> speaking as a millennial yeah. <laughs> I love it I love it yeah no thank you so much Justin for everything that you do please check out her website guys it will really really help you or I'm sure you know somebody 
who needs help. You probably, you know what? I think it would even apply to like regular jobs. It's not just for college kids. Like, yeah. You'll oh get my something. gosh, I get a lot of emails from people older than me yes. who are kind of mad. That said, where were you when I was in college? I was like, <laughs> according to my calculation, I was still in high school. I'm so sorry. <laughs> like, I'm so sorry. I would not be qualified to assist you yet. <laughs> yeah, I was like still trapped in a convent somewhere. Like, I'm sorry, I broke out already. I'm here. <laughs> Right on. Well, thank you so much for being part of the show. Thank you so and much, Dale. <laughs> thank you. Alrighty.